you are listening to the Wandering Chronicles podcast. I'm Ashley. I'm Jamie. Hola, Jamie. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah, I don't feel very too. good. I don't really like any medicine. I cut myself in my sleep from this stupid... Oh. I don't know if you can see that, but I have a fingernail-shaped gouge on my chin. Oh, I see, like, a red mark, yeah. It hurt so bad. Ow. I'm, I'm just, sorry. What's going on with you? I threw my back out. <laughs> Don't get older, kids. It's a trap. <laughs> Join the 27 Club. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm totally I mean, at kidding. least she'll be in cool company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have some fun fun guests to hang out with. I feel like, as much as I like, love Kurt Cobain, at some point he would be obnoxious to be hanging out with. It's kind of self-righteous people who just like think their view of the world is the view of the world that everyone should have. Oh, yeah. So. He and I are the same person. I don't think that's up for, de- for debate. <laughs> I listened to interviews about him and I'm like, oh yeah, we were like the same person. Totally. <laughs> there's no there's no room for like intricacies of opinion when it comes to hatred and bullshit. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of stuff he was out about, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's been well, he's been dead for a long time. But he was pro trans rights way mm-hmm. before that was like mainstream to be. So Yeah, I watched a documentary on him a couple years ago and it was pretty interesting. He's a really mm-hmm. interesting guy. He has bipolar disorder, so yeah. Yep. Oh, this medicine gives me heartburn. That's oh, the man. biggest thing I hate about it. Among the many things I hate about it. Very long list. So, I don't think either of us are too bantery today. No, not I'm well. not and feeling I'm, well. I think we both... I definitely well. woke up, threw my back out, sitting in my studio. Yeah, I just woke up this morning. Yesterday was such a bad day. And I didn't get shit all done. And I woke up with a headache and heartburn. And I was like, fuck it. I mean, up until about half an hour ago, I was just laying on a heating pad on my couch. Yeah. So, you know, when I get done with this, I'll lay on an ice pack and see what happens. Like, If it doesn't feel better here in the next couple of days, would you consider going to bed right now? <sighs> I'd consider it. There's one down the street from me, so I probably just, like, hobble there. Have you ever been to a chiropractor? No. But usually my back issues get better within, like, a day or two. So, yeah. like, it's already better than it was yesterday. Like, yesterday I couldn't take two steps without yelping. Yeah. And today I was able to walk across my apartment without yelping so obviously like it just hurts when i'm standing up or sitting down otherwise i'm like i'm not comfortable now but it doesn't like make me want to scream so I'm okay I'm, yeah i'm taking that as a step in the right direction yeah i mean it's just something to think about um yeah chiropractors i always help every time i also don't go until it's been a while mm-hmm. like i will wait up to a week to go in <laughs> it hurts so bad when i move too much but like i have a pillow this chair is so uncomfortable to begin with and i'm like if i have to sit here and talk I want to have like some back support so I took a pillow but of course the pillow takes up like half the chair so I'm like sitting on the edge of the chair it's comfortable it's helping my back it's putting pressure in the right spots but it's not comfortable <laughs> there's like no other option so I'm like all right I'm just gonna sit here and just power through it's back comfortable not ask oh yeah no this chair is never gonna be as comfortable I'm like sitting on basically a sheet of plastic it just hurts there's no cushion for my tush <laughs> no cushion for your pushing no I hold a groin muscle like in 20 20- 20 literally right at the time everything closed i was oh. limping i was having a hard time cool on that note all right we're in um we're in sunny florida again in fort myers fuck yeah we are <laughs> how'd you get there i feel like i astral projected okay. okay i think i went to sleep because i'm on this medication that like fucking fucks with me and i mm-hmm. woke up in florida bleeding of the chin chin area oh that's like a tuesday in florida yeah, no one, no one noticed. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, you're a day early on the chin bleed, but okay. They're like, bath salt's cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. So. Tuesdays, buy one, get one bath salt. <laughs> oh. Bogo bath salt. Oh, God. No, Tuesday it hurts. Special. Stop making me laugh. Don't be funny. <laughs> I can't promise anything. <laughs> Damn it. Well, how about you? How did you get there? I am going to, uh, I'm going to take a boat, but at some point that boat's going to become airborne. Like, okay, I have to tell you the immediate brain visual that I had. Okay. Have I ever sent you, or have you just seen in the world on your own without me being the one to send you, any of those videos of the wind taking Portageons away? No. Oh my god, they're some of my favorite videos of just, like, the background music. My favorite one is, like, a festival of some sort. There's people Mm -hmm. everywhere and it's windy and people are trying to like hold their shit down you know their display it must have been like an art show trying to hold their tents down and all of a sudden (laughs) this portage on lifts off the ground completely and just like (gasps) and the music is sailing 
Take me away. <laughs> I'm not used to hearing them called Porta John. I'm used to Porta Potty. Oh, just yeah, same. Thing. Yeah, I know, but I'm not used to that term. But like, I was like Porta John. What's a Porta John? I don't even know what that is. And then it was like, okay, no, it's a it's a Porta Potty. Okay. I think Porta John is like a brand name. It's like Kleenex yeah. versus tissue. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like the brand name of where I live. Doesn't matter. That, yeah. Yeah. That's what I picture when I picture a boat line. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be taking a flying boat, not a flying portable toilet. <laughs> it's like the like the discount TARDIS. It's low budget TARDIS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The doctor comes out and he's just like some weird hippie dude who's just like trying to sell you beats. Or he's Mr. Hanky from South Park. <laughs> oh my god. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's just get into it because Florida's gonna be it's gonna be a mess. Oh uh, well, I feel like that story is appropriate then. Oh yeah, no, it, it's it's gonna get messy in this episode. Cool. Disney does come up again, by the way. I'm sure. I'm sure. What you was just that face? Made the most exorcist head about to spin face I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> she even tried to reach back and lick her back. <laughs> I've seen Johnny do that sort of thing where he's like trying to get a spot on his back that he can't reach and he's like, That's exactly what just happened. <laughs> It's funny. All right, so enough about our possessed cats and flying porta potties. We're in Florida, so a little bit about Fort Myers, Florida. It is also the county seat of Lee County, and I had mentioned in the mommy episode that mommy for a while had served as the county seat, but I didn't look up what a county seat was, mm. so I did this time. So for a town or a city to be the county seat simply means that it serves as the center of administration for the county. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I grew up in a county seat. Yeah, it basically means that that's town. The courthouse was in, or where you would go to get your things done if it yeah. was a small enough county that it wasn't everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So there are some areas that have multiple county seats, like usually, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it's a rare instance where a county has two county seats. But I guess that makes sense because there are some counties that are split in half. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that like Harris County in Texas, which is like the biggest county, would have two county seats because like driving mm-hmm. from one end to the other would be over an hour and a half. So if you have like a count, like yeah. a court date, one half of the of the county, you have to drive two hours to get to it. That That's is. insane. Yeah, I also know um, there are a county. There's a county in uh, the seats cut in half. Like yeah. there's another county. Type. Yeah, little little so nesting weird. doll of counties. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Uh, I don't, I don't. I knew at one point why I don't now. There. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm surprised I didn't look up what a county seat was for mommy, but I didn't, so I did this time. Yeah, I, I guess made up I, for it eventually. We, when I was a kid, we had a. I'm sure now as an adult, not nearly as big and cool looking courthouse in my hometown as I remember it. it I remember it being massive. Mm-hmm. It was all marble inside, and somehow we got away with laying inside. Oh, weird. So they have this huge yard again. As a grown up, probably not that big, but it seemed huge to me as a child. And we would play kick the can in the courthouse yard and then we would Aww. go inside and I remember running all around and like making the, the marble echo. Oh my god. There's no way that anyone there didn't hate this as a child because <laughs> I was obnoxious. But I never, I don't remember ever getting yelled at. That's interesting. Yeah. It's kind of cool though. You get to run around a courthouse as a child. Yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure I must have gotten yelled at because there's no way they would just let this happen all the time with everyone. Unless they just didn't have a lot of action going on there. That's true. Like, it was just very, it was like a very well air conditioned building. Yeah. And it was kind of on the way places so we would walk go inside just to like cool off when we were outside playing. That's lot. fair. Free so. range child. <laughs> Yes. You were a free-range child. Yes. There's a lot of things I did that I probably shouldn't have been doing as a child. <laughs> I mean, we also, I mean, I'm not that much younger than you, but, like, I remember growing up in a time where, like, my parents didn't hover over and try and, like, figure out where I was at all times. As long right. as, like, I was home by dinner, they didn't care. You're not that much younger than me, but you grew up in a different world than me. Because I feel like where I grew up is ten years behind everything. hmm So, yes, you were only two years younger than me but in as far as how we were raised where we grew up we're like very a different decade apart. <laughs> yeah very different yeah but i did get hit by two cars when i was a kid wow okay i did not know that about you that seems like something i should have known about you the driver was my brother both times <laughs> That's a scare. I, I feel bad for how much that makes me laugh. That's really funny. Both times I was riding my bike somewhere and I, he just came up behind me and just hit me with the car. On purpose? Uh-huh. My dad hit me with a car once. 
Was it on purpose or accidental? No, well, it was an accident, but it was, like, stupid. A mm-hmm. stupid accident that should have been avoided. He ran over my feet once. Oh, no. Like, he fully drove over my feet. Because I was Ouch. trying to get in the car. I also had our dog, and I was trying to get the dog to get in the car first. And he noticed that the dog was in, and I guess he thought I was already in. Oh. And he didn't notice that the door was still fully open, and I was still working on getting into the car. Oh, no. And he drove completely over my feet. Oh, no. And a good ways down the road before he realized. Wow, that is really bad. That he just fucking left me in the dust back there. And we weren't, like, home. We were on vacation. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Alright, yeah. My da- my brother just hit me, like, nudged me with the car on my back tires so that I would fall off my bike. Yeah, that would be scary for me, though, too. Because every he- it happened twice. The fact that it happened twice, and then he tried to do it a third time, but I saw him coming. And so I got on the sidewalk where he couldn't get me. I don't know if you remember this happening where you grew up or if this was just, again, like a small town thing, but I was always very kind of afraid of falling off my bike because I knew several kids that got really fucked up in bike falls or bike accidents. Yeah, my brother did not give a shit about that. I could have fallen towards a curb and, like, hit my neck on it. There were so many ways I could have been, like, seriously injured. Yeah. There was a kid that I grew up with that had something similar happen, only it wasn't on purpose, so it was a lot harder. It wasn't, like, a gentle bump. This person literally yeah. hit him with their car. <laughs> like, yeah. Going normal speed. It wasn't, it was like a 25 mile an hour speed Eek. zone, but that's still really fucking fast. And My he brother went, thought he could get away with it. He probably would have hit me at 25 miles per hour. I'm glad he didn't because this kid went flying like head first over the top of his handlebars. Mm-hmm. And then there was a stop sign and he hit the corner of the stop sign and like <gasps> cut his face open really bad. He ended up having to have plastic surgeries and stuff. Ooh, ouch. So, I mean, that was was how it probably couldn't replicate that again like a kind of a freak accident yeah. but still no way oh. that kind of story was enough for me to be like i'm not that, that freaks me out that's why you i don't really mean? ride my bike now because i'm like terrified of getting hit by a car all right, let's get into the story. So, Fort Myers gets its name from the fort that was built there during the Seminole Wars, mm-hmm. named for Colonel Abraham Myers in 1850. Fort Myers community was founded post-Civil War by Captain Manuel A. Gonzalez. He had been familiar with the area, having spent years delivering supplies and mail for the Union Army during the Seminole Wars and Civil War. After the fort had been abandoned, Gonzalez settled with his wife, Evelina, and daughter, Mary, as well as Joseph and Christiana Vivas, and Fun fact for horror film fans, the abandoned city scene with the Edison Theater in the 1985 film Day of the Dead was filmed in downtown Fort Myers. So there you go. There you have fun facts for Fort Myers. Yeah. yeah. So today I wanted to talk about hurricanes. Okay. And the death impact they have and talk about some of the few survivor stories as well. Okay. Typical hurricanes are about 300 miles wide but can vary in size. The eye is somewhere between 20 and 40 miles across with the areas of calm but the wall of which wind around the eye is composed of dense cloud and have some of the highest wind speeds. Mm-hmm. There are six conditions widely for hurricane development. I'm going to go through each one kind of quickly. Ocean temperature, which generally in the areas affected by hurricanes never dip below this, but it has to be above 79 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius. A water temp below will result in a storm weakening rapidly as it moves over the water. Generally, though, both East Pacific and tropical Atlantic oceans don't drop below this threshold. So, okay. um, distance from the equator. So, without the spin from of the Earth and the Coriolis force, hurricanes cannot form. Coriolis force in physics is just the force that applies to the movement of rotating objects. It works perpendicular to the object's axis, i.e. the Earth spins west to east. Coriolis force acts north to south direction. Essentially, this is because it is at its strongest at the poles. Hurricanes cannot form within five degrees of the equator. It creates a counterclockwise spin to low pressure in the northern hemisphere and clockwise spin in southern hemisphere. Okay. (sighs) Having to dive into physics is just a little too much for me, so... No, I'm I'm familiar with that, and I I guess I forgot that it was different south of the equator than it is up here, but... Yeah, yeah, the spin is a little bit different. Yeah, I did know that at one point, and then, you know, probably replaced that... (laughs) With something else? Spot of memory in my brain with Duggar (laughs) trivia. (laughs) Of course. I mean, that's important. <laughs> I don't know which is more useful. Duck or trivia. How often does Coriolis force come up in conversation? I personally bring the Duggars up a lot, but that doesn't mean that that's a good thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So number three, hurricanes are warm core storms. A saturated lapse rate radiant near the center of the rotation of the storm is necessary. That ensures that latent heat will be released at a maximum rate. The lapse rate must be unstable around the eye wall to ensure that the air will keep rising up and condense the water vapor. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one, number four, is one of the most important aspects, is a low vertical wind shear, especially in the upper level of the atmosphere. Strong upper level winds destroy the storm structure by replacing the warm temperatures above the eye, so a hurricane cannot form if that happens. Mm. Um, okay. High humidity values from the surface to mid-levels of the atmosphere. Dry air at the mid-levels impede the development by evaporating the water, essentially cooling, and it creates a trade wind inversion similar to sinking air in a high-pressure system. And the final condition is that of a tropical wave. Often hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean begin as a thunderstorm moving off the coast of Africa, then become a mid-tropospheric wave. If the above five conditions happen, it will become a tropical storm and or hurricane. Those are the mm-hmm. six conditions required to create a hurricane. Makes sense. Yep. And we are in hurricane season now. Yes, we are. And I will talk about hurricane season a little bit too, so thank you. So hurricane force winds can extend about 25 miles for a smaller storm and 150 miles for a larger storm. Frequently due to the rotation of the storm, the right side of the storm is the more dangerous side of the storm for storm surges, winds, and tornadoes. I didn't know that. Which, to me, the fact that hurricanes can create tornadoes has always, like, been something that, like, fucks with my mind a little bit, because it's like a windstorm inside a windstorm, and it, it kind of blows my mind that, like, and the fact that a hurricane can produce a tornado while it's already, like, producing all these insane winds, and then you have, like, this other wind storm in the middle of it it's just like what the fuck nature is crazy i think it's i think it's a distinction on uh a hurricane is a type of Mm -hmm. storm just like a storm surge that would have Mm -hmm. like supercells that typically so the tornado is almost like the symptom of the thing and i think that's why it's confusing to and i think that's why it's confusing to think of them it's not even like confusing. It's just like mind blowing. Okay, so you have a hurricane. This is like this big storm's already coming through. It's this huge storm that produces insane amount of winds, and then you have this insane windstorm mm-hmm. coming through and creating a mini windstorm within it. It's just like yeah, Russian nesting doll of storms. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's crazy and terrible. The, I guess the good news is, generally speaking, the tornadoes are different the, than the tornadoes yeah. that the planes have. So they're probably more of a quick spin-up that's going to create damage centralized to one small area that's not like... Yeah, it's not going to be something that moves miles. It just, that makes it harder because you don't know yeah. that they're coming. They're really hard to predict. Like, you kind of just have yeah. to be gone. That supercell that came through here last Monday was bonkers. That was so much fun to watch. I was having a oh, ball. Yeah. I mean, if you if you are not in the middle of a supercell, like, mm-hmm. if you're watching it and you can see it, but you know it's not coming your direction, <laughs> or that if it is coming your direction, you'll be yeah. trying to get to safety, they're oh, fucking they, fascinating that, to watch. I mean, they really the whole are. time I was watching it, and I'm like, odds of anything really insane happening where I live, it's just so low. It's just so low, mm-hmm. and I wasn't really concerned about, like, the aspect of a tornado touching down where I was. It's just the entire storm, the tornado sirens are going off, and I'm getting, like, alerts being like, there's a tornado in the area and i'm looking at it they're like the area's neighborville i'm like that's not for me like i'm yeah. i'm a mile north of the loop i saw a bunch of tiktoks about that i meant yeah. to tell you that actually because we were chatting with each other as that was happening in real time then after the fact i saw a bunch of tiktoks of people that because i follow a few mm-hmm. people from chicago they were like does anyone else hear this shit <laughs> it like snuck up like all of a sudden it was like sunny and then you can see the cloud off into like the, the northwest i'm just like watching it come in and like everything's getting windy and people are just like, walking their dogs outside and it starts raining and people are still like yeah. running and jogging and I'm like hey it can't be that bad if people are still outside doing stuff yeah it's almost a little too bad I mean it's it's good when they use the sirens and people take them as like cautionary yeah get to safety but it kind of defeats the purpose when people are hearing those and taking it as like eh, whatever and taking their dog for a walk <laughs> It's weird. Like, I've heard the sirens. I know what they sound like because I've heard the testing of the sirens. It literally went on for, like, an hour and a half. The entire storm, you could just hear it in the background through all the rain and the wind. It was just like, yeah. 
I'm like, all right, well, you could, you could set this siren off in all storms. I'd like it. I'm into it. Let's do it. Yeah. I have to tell you a funny story about the fucking sirens. When I lived about an hour south of St. Louis, like in mm-hmm. Festus, this little town, I lived outside of town and there's a lot of valleys and hills yeah. down there. So I could hear the siren from where I live, like from town to where I live, but it sounded crazy because of all of the valleys and hills. Oh yeah, the way the sound travels. And it was just like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and then the first time I heard it on when Halloween is happening and it's time to quit trick-or-treating, like the town trick-or-treating in. Oh god, that just makes it even creepier. Right, so the first time I ever heard it was at, I don't know, 8 o'clock at night on Halloween night, and it was just, woo, 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 woo. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's so creepy. I love it. It was hilarious once I figured it out, but it was definitely creepy. (laughs) Definitely not funny when it's happening. You're like, what the fuck is that? I stepped out on my front porch. I'm like, do I have a ghost? (laughs) The most obvious sounding ghost To be fair, you do realize that's my reaction to pretty much anything that goes on in my apartment. I'm just like, I have a ghost, don't I? Yeah, but the stuff that you're <laughs> reacting to isn't, like, campy bullshit. Like, the clip that we put for in place of the copywritten episode Ooh. that we posted recently, where it's just like, Ooh. Like, that's what the siren sounded like, and I'm like, there's oh, no yeah. way. But is there a way? I mean, <laughs> I told you about the time there was that earthquake, and I thought my apartment was haunted, so, you know... <laughs> I, my my automatic jump for anything is, all right, this place is haunted and I just need to live with this. I was in a prison once and there was an earthquake and the guy freaked out. I was interviewing this guy that was getting released for treatment for his mm-hmm. addiction problems and he freaked out and I looked at him like, it's just an earthquake. Totally kidding. I just thought it was like some, somebody dropped something and it echoed off the walls. You know, it was yeah. this old building and who knows? Who the fuck knows what it is at that point? We were kind of sat next to the elevator shaft so I thought well maybe someone in the elevator shaft yeah. dropped something who knows and then I got home and found out it legitimately <laughs> was an earthquake and the next time I went in that guy was like you're a genius <laughs> I'm like no I'm just an asshole that gets lucky every once in a while <laughs> I mean when in doubt assume earthquake or ghosts those are the two that I jumped in I lived in Erie Pennsylvania I would never assume it was an earthquake <laughs> I mean, I should have assumed that the one that I had was an earthquake because Chicago is near a fault line. Not super close, but... Oh, yeah. And if you feel it, it's different. I just... We just heard yeah. a loud sound. And there was no physical sensation associated with it whatsoever. Yeah. I should have been like, oh, there's an earthquake. I should just go back to sleep. No, I was like, oh, God, my apartment's yeah. haunted. That's hysterical. The best part about that story is that you told me you had a roommate at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I was living with Barry at the time. And the next morning I was like, did your room shake in the middle of the night? She's like, yeah, there was an earthquake. I'm like, oh, that makes more sense than what I thought. (laughs) I woke up in the middle of the night, my bed is shaking, and I go, oh, my apartment's haunted. And instead of being freaked out by that, I just go right back to sleep. I just fall back asleep, like, no big deal. I'm like, oh, cool, shaking bed, that's comfy. That is the most Ashley thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. it's, It's who I am, man. Just assume it's haunted. <laughs> One day I'm gonna be right. I mean, the odds are in your favor. <laughs> All right. So hurricanes are rated on a scale of one to five based on the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. Keep in mind the scale only measures the wind force and not other potential hazards that come with these storms, i.e., rainfall, storm surge, or tornadoes. Again, all five mm-hmm. categories of wind speed are dangerous, with category one starting at 74 miles per hour and category five topping out at 157 miles per hour. I did read somewhere that there were people trying to talk about adding a a sixth category of something higher because a lot of these storms reach over 157 miles per hour and so saying it just stops at 157 mm-hmm. if you have something that's like 190 miles per hour i feel like that needs another yeah, category that's a whole different thing yeah especially with the way mm-hmm. things have yeah. been going a further example is that a, a category one might damage a frame house with a well-constructed roof tree branches might be down and likely damage to power lines while a category five is a high percentage of destroying a frame house with total roof failure and wall collapse trees and 
power lines will be down, power likely down for weeks to possibly months, and the area will be uninhabitable for weeks to months. These storms can wipe out communities, and there is a video I posted a link to that is just a simulation of the wind scale. It's 33 seconds long, so if you want to watch it, you can, and if not, that's fine too, but it's just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Close the roof. Yep. Not gonna lie. Category 5 scares the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. That was category three. Yeah, was category three is scary. Ooh. There it goes. Everything's gone. Yeah, category five just wipes it all away. It is gone. Yeah. Clean slate. It's terrible. And so, with that in mind, we all remember what Katrina did to New Orleans. And historically, August 20th to October 20th have the highest chance of a hurricane tropical storm forming. And I believe her, I believe Katrina was a four or five at that point. It's definitely still ranked as the worst hurricane to come through this country. Yeah, I can't remember the rain gauge. <clears throat> a lot of what was bad about Hurricane Katrina wouldn't have even been what yeah. they classically use as the, because it was rainfall in location that it hit. Storm surge was definitely bad on that one. Yeah, and it was the spot that it touched land was, you know, had it been 30 miles in either direction, it probably would have been a much different yeah. type of storm. But it hit right on the delta, yeah. right in an area where, the, what is it, Lake Punta yeah, Train? Yeah, something called? like that. Like right there. Yeah, Katrina was bad. Katrina was really bad. Yeah. I am definitely not talking about Katrina today. I am going to specifically okay. talk about Hurricane Irma. So, okay. if you remember back in 2017 when Harvey, Irma, and Maria were the three major hurricanes that year. Irma mm-hmm. actually happened about three weeks after Harvey. That was not good. Mm. I remember, yeah, that's the same year that Trump decided to throw paper towels at the problem, right? That was Maria. No, that was actually Hurricane Florence. Oh. I looked it up because I was really curious. And no, it was Florence. I was really disappointed that I couldn't bring that up. But I'm glad you thought of that because I thought the same thing. Oh, okay. I thought it was her. I thought it was Maria. I thought it was Maria too, and I thought it was 2017, but I think it was 18 when Florence hit. Oh, okay. he, um, not a smart man. Understand yeah. the century. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. On August 30th, 2017, Irma developed as a tropical wave off the coast of Cape Verde Island. It obviously met the conditions that we talked about above as it developed into a Category 3 hurricane by late August 31st. And for the next few days, Irma fluctuated between a Category 2 and a Category 3 due to a series of eyewall replacement cycles. And by September 4th, mm-hmm. Irma began to intensify, becoming a Category 5 hurricane. Irma did break the record for long longest of any cyclone in the world since 1932 to maintain the intense winds for 37 hours straight and spent three consecutive days as a category five and at its Mm. peak had a wind speed of 180 miles per hour it did have another eyewall replacement weakening it to a category four but it did not last long as it recovered her category five status just before making landfall in cuba it weakened to a category two over cuba but by the time it went back over the water it gained power again irma made landfall on September 10th, 2017, hitting the Florida Keys as a Category 4, holding the holding at a Category 3 through Naples, and slowing down to a Category 2 right after Fort Myers. Prior to Irma making landfall, then-Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency, placing 100 members of the Florida National Guard on duty to help with preparation, and I did make a note that all 7,000 members of the Guard were on duty as well. Residents who were not ordered to evacuate were advised to stock their hurricane survival kits. The state also coordinated with utility companies to prepare for expedited service repairs and the eventuality of power loss or power outages. Preparations were made for schools and government offices and shelters were set up. And because I cannot mention it, but for the fifth time in its 45 years, Walt Disney World Resort had was completely closed for three days. Good. Fort Myers had issued a order for partial mandatory evacuation, meaning that sections of the area were likely to be more dangerous than others and that those sections had been ordered to evacuate. All in all, 6.5 million Floridians evacuated the state, making it Florida's largest evacuation. Wow. Yeah. The whole state. Yeah. I guess it makes sense of the way it the track was it wasn't going across it was kind of going up it definitely definitely decided to hit all of florida and then come straight for missouri i'm looking at the map (laughs) yes this was 2017 yeah asking to because a lot of times these hurricane remnants that when they do make their Mm -hmm. way to my area 
it's during festival season. <laughs> and so there are a lot of really funny festival stories of hurricane remnants. They're not, obviously, yeah. by the time they get that far inland, mm -hmm. it's rain and not a lot else. So the loss of life is mm -hmm. minimal, yeah, if any. Um, but I remember in particular, I think this was like 2013, when they <laughs> there was a hurricane remnants that hit Arkansas during a festival that I used to go to in Arkansas. Now, but it was called Wakarusa, and they called that year Swamparusa. <laughs> and pretty much everyone left their tents on the mountain they left that. They had so many oh broken tents, broken camping equipment, just broken oh my crap God. everywhere. So the cleanup was quite oh a process. <laughs> However, not everything was smooth. Jermaine Arena, now Hertz Arena, was available to shelter 4,000 people until a rumor spread that the arena was unsafe, which a Lee County spokesman called mass hysteria. That's so sad, though. I can totally see how something like that could get blown out of proportion really fast in a situation where people are that afraid. Oh, yeah. They did reassure people that the venue was hardened against hurricanes and that it was absolutely safe. Pasco yeah. County Sheriff's Office had to warn citizens to not shoot their guns in the air after a Facebook page suggested shooting Irma out of the sky went viral. Oh my god. Fucking, of course it did. We are living in the <laughs> we are. Um, That is cuckoo bananas to me. <laughs> the bullet trajectory could come down and hurt individuals. Fortunately, there had been no reports of people doing that, but it's Florida, so it needed to be said. Yeah. Oh, it does. that does happen. There was a woman in St. Louis who was killed by yeah. a stray bullet that some guy had shot up his gun into the air on, I think it was like yeah. 4th of July weekend. This was several years ago. And it came down right into her house. She was sitting in her house. And out of the puff blue, just got shot. I mean, people don't think about it. When you shoot the gun up, the trajectory is still going to come back down. And with wind speeds, you right. could end up hurting somebody if it's like blowing the bullet somewhere else. Or it could also just shoot straight back oh, down yeah. and get you. Like, There's no way no. to plan for it when it's windy. It's always dangerous, but I, I feel like if you're in a safe, you know there's no one yeah. in that direction for miles and miles and miles. Okay. Yeah. Like, whatever. If that, that's what gives you a boner. Alright, you're <laughs> killing me. I'm done. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's hysterical. That is fucking sign mm -hmm. of the times, man. <laughs> all right, so the damage Irma ended up costing all affected areas was seventy seven point two billion dollars between Turks and Caicos Island, Cuba, the Bahamas, and the U.S. Among many others, Irma was the sixth most costly hurricane in U.S. history. Really? Mm hmm. I did not realize that. Okay. Irma was a beast. I do remember Irma because I vaguely remember a hurricane hitting the Keys and then hitting a different part of Florida and that being like a creep. Yeah, it kind of like swooped around and like hit back onto the land. It was weird. Yeah, and um, one of my college friends lived down in that area at the time, so I remember yeah. talking to her about it. Like, hey, are you going to leave? She's like, Fuck Yeah. Me. I have some uh, kind of funny stories from people surviving the hurricane, so I'll get into that, but... <laughs> Okay. Hurricane Irma was responsible directly for 47 deaths in the Caribbean islands and southeastern United States. Most of the deaths in the Caribbean were due to the winds from the hurricane. In the United yeah. States, there were 10 deaths, seven in Florida, one of which was in Lee County, and two in Georgia, and one in South Carolina. There were another 82 deaths indirectly caused by Irma, 77 of which were in Florida, with hundreds more sustaining injuries. And this is kind of a sad story, but I wanted to cover it anyways, because I think it's important to remember. Of the 77 indirect deaths Irma caused in Florida, eight were in a nursing home, patients who died due to the AC being cut off. 115 of the residents. That is so sad. Yeah, it it's it's so sad. Um, 115 residents were evacuated from the Hollywood Hills facility in Hollywood, Florida. Three were found dead in the facility, while five more died at the hospital, and they ranged from age 71 to 99 years old. The patients had been left since Sunday when the storm rolled in until Wednesday that week without air conditioning and temperatures ranging from 88 degrees to 91 degrees. Governor Scott ordered that all nursing home facilities in the affected areas to be checked. A criminal investigation was started, and Scott called the situation unfathomable per one kitchen worker yeah. in the facility generators generators in the building allowed for them to cook for the residents but did not provide air conditioning in the facility the facilities have also had brushes with regulators in recent years having been found to violate federal rules on its power system a generator and facility alarm 
the eight people who lost their lives due to the facility's negligence were Estella Hendricks, age 71, Gail Nova, age 71, Carolyn Etherly, age 78, Betty Hibbard, age 84, Bobby Owens, 84, Miguel A. Franco, 92, Manuel M. Medietta, 96, and Albertina Vega, 99. And while other facilities struggled with similar issues, residents were taken care of either by providing ice to stay cool or being transported to facilities that could keep them comfortable while the power was being restored. And while death is part of these big storms, I definitely don't want to overlook those stories. Most of I mostly wanted to cover stories of survival from the hurricane, and not all the stories are specific to Fort Myers, but they are specific to Florida. The first one is Zach, who was 26 at the time, living in Marco Island in southwest Florida. He ignored the orders to evacuate and rode out the storm in his apartment with his roommate, Croc. That's a person? Croc is a human. (laughs) Zach told CNN, it was not a nuclear hurricane, but it was a badass hurricane. Nuclear? What the hell is a nuclear hurricane? I don't know. I don't know. The dude lives in Florida for a reason, obviously. This guy thinks Sharknado (laughs) is based off reality. I mean... It's not. Uh, Zach was from Tulsa and had been familiar with tornadoes, saying it was loud, it was scary, but the storm was really intense. It was like a tornado that lasted for an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Um, Diane and Riley, a couple living in Estero, Florida, which is 20 miles south of Fort Myers, stayed in their home as Irma came through. They were nervous about the traffic getting out of town, and Riley had been recovering from surgery, so they decided to wait out the storm in their house with the windows shuttered. They described a hibiscus tree in their yard being flattened to the ground. Mm-hmm. Diane recounted the experience, saying, I feel like I'm in a sardine can, and I don't like it. My husband said he'd duct tape me into the chair if I tried to open the front door. <laughs> Oh, we duct taped someone to a chair in high school. Once. I duct taped my ex boyfriend in high in college. I just wrapped him in duct tape yeah. and let him walk around for a while. Oh, we duct taped someone in high school too. You know those chairs that would sit on the ground that were like rocky chairs. Oh God! Someone we used an entire roll of duct tape. Oh my God! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> they were into it. <laughs> I can say the same thing about my ex. <laughs> oh, this was, yeah, definitely not only my idea. This was... He was not my ex at the time I did this either. No, oh, but that came, that came shortly it, after? It didn't last much longer. Um... In a South in a South Florida location of the Aloft Hotel, doors were locked and visitors staying at the hotel prepared for the storm. Per Sergio from Argentina, who he and his wife was delayed flying home by the hurricane, said, No fear and no pain as they watched the storm from the hotel's large windows. Caroline, who was also at the Aloft Hotel, is a LA-based journalist covering the tension between the U.S. and North Korea, noted the dizzying pace of crises is hitting the U.S. Nobody's talking about Harvey now, which, as I mentioned earlier, had happened three weeks before prior to Irma on August 17th, 2017, hitting Texas and Louisiana. America is crazy right now. Between Trump, (laughs) Mother Nature, and North Korea, I haven't stopped. Oh, honey, I am so sorry for your future. It's only the beginning. That that wasn't even, I don't even count that as part of it. It's just so intense. (laughs) That's hysterical. The foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 came in and was like, bitch, you said what? 2020 is like, hold on to your butts. Go places. Hold on to your butts, indeed. <laughs> All of them. Every one of your butts. I'm going to give uh, some hurricane preparedness tips because we're coming up on hurricane season and maybe some listeners new to the regions <laughs> affected by hurricanes may find this helpful. Yes. Before you do that, can I share another story that you did? I don't think you included as part of this. Oh, if you did, okay. tell me. And I'll shut up. But did you know, I googled this just to make sure I wasn't remembering incorrectly. Kristen Kristen Bell was filming something in the Fort Myer area. Okay. When that when Hurricane Irma hit. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I didn't see that in any of my research. Okay, so I remember this story because it made me fall in love with her a little bit. And I already loved her quite a lot. She's one of those people that I'm just like, this girl does no wrong. But she was there and um, of course staying in a hotel because she's mm-hmm. not from there. And they had evacuated I don't know if it was just people, elderly people living on their home 
home or if it was an mm-hmm. old folks home that was being evacuated like a bunch of elderly people were given free nights to stay there like to stay safe and she posted on I remember this like so vividly she posted all these stories on Instagram of her playing card games with the elderly people and just like helping them take care of them like you know I'm gonna get you a glass of water that kind of thing um and she talks about it a lot you know and not yeah, not a lot she's talked about it in interviews as how like that was really fucking scary but it was cool to be able to help people oh cool she's such a delightful person yeah she's a good human so i'm gonna cover some tips and so as you mentioned earlier that we are in hurricane season so hurricane season for the atlantic area and the central pacific area is june 1st through november 30th and then yeah for now I mean, probably gonna change they're talking i think next year it'll probably be may 15th well that's what i was gonna about to add the eastern pacific season is a little bit longer starting on May 15th. Yeah, they're talking about adding um, the Atlantic to that as well. Because of global warming. Yeah. Yeah. It, it. I mean, it makes sense. It It probably should just be cohesive May 15th through November 30th. Yeah. I mean, there was there was already a hurricane before. Yeah. And it's not unheard of. Obviously, it's going to happen sometimes, yeah. but it's been happening more frequently. Uh, so, I was I read an article about that too. You know me. I do know you. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to read articles about things. So things to keep in mind if you live in the affected areas is first, and probably the most talked about is making sure that you have supplies such as medication, food, water, necessary, household supplies, and pet supplies if you have a fuzzy or not fuzzy loved one. And Mm -hmm. um, number two is discuss your emergency plan with family members. Keep in mind to inform your work and your school should need to act quickly. For family members who might need additional help evacuating, please make sure that you plan specifically to make sure that they are evacuated safely. Uh, Know your Mm -hmm. evacuation zone practice with family and pets will help you be ready should you need to be and know where you will be staying should you need to flee hotel family or storm shelter Prepare your home by boarding up windows and doors have your technology mm-hmm. charged and ready stocking rechargeable batteries with cords will also be helpful mm-hmm. uh, have important documents in a convenient place ready to pack should you need to leave quickly and be nice and take care of your neighbors be nice to each other mm-hmm. and-, and if you do stay one thing that I've seen a lot of people talk about is fill your bathtub with clean water oh that's a good point in case you go without having clean water for a while or at least have the ability Mm -hmm. to boil water should you need to clean the water or you know even if you need to just flush the toilet because dumping a you know pitcher of water down the toilet can flush the toilet every true because if the internet is down the toilets will not flush this is you never know you never know (laughs) you never know what's going to be affected um and i do have one more little fun tidbit to finish off this story okay are you ready for a florida man fuck yes i am i actually found one that's very very appropriate for what we talked about i found me a hurricane florida man oh god okay i'm so excited so obviously it wouldn't be a florida trip without a florida man story and in 2016 as hurricane matthew bore down on florida's east coast lane Pittman from jacksonville took off his shirt grabbed his american flag and challenged the hurricane to a duel he stood on the street to wave the flag and headbang to slayers raining blood Pittman later told his facebook page had a request for some hair action during the cane i granted it he was arrested for his antics <laughs> <laughs> what was the charges? Probably just like endangerment. So D bag, just being a D bag in public. Did you see at the end of the photos? There's a photo of him, and there's also a clip to one of him. Um, I think it was during Florence that he was doing this, but I can't remember which hurricane it was. But this the videos. He's done this more than once. Oh, he does it almost with every hurricane now. So when Hurricane Dorian came through, he was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He'd been there for the hurricane Florence the year before, where he stood on top of a parking garage and head banged to Slayer while holding the American flag again. And there's a 10 second clip you can watch of him doing it. It is worth it. It is fucking hilarious. This is the most fucking American thing I've ever heard of in my this. life. No shoes? No shoes, just shorts and an American flag. Are the, those are boxers. Yeah, he was in his underwear. What is he what is he challenging the hurricane to? A cuddle session? 
<laughs> so he did it again in Louisiana when Hurricane Laura swept through, and he can be seen waist deep in water once again holding the flag and facing down the hurricane while playing May Lane and the Sons of Disasters, its caution, dangerous curves ahead. The message he posted this video with is, Louisiana, Florida man is here for you. Laura, you raggedy she-devil, get some. At least he, so he's fully owning Florida man. Oh yeah, no, he's fully owning it. I can appreciate that. I also have to say, Mm -hmm. unironically, this dude looks exactly like the guy that had a radio show (laughs) after me when I was in college and did college radio. Like, Exa- like they're probably, probably related. This guy is ridiculous. So he's chased storms since Matthew, <laughs> having headbanged to Irma as well as others. He also has set up in the past fundraisers for hurricane disaster relief, and he uses his Florida manness for good. This is a good Florida man story. I mean, the guy's kind of a tool, <laughs> but a good tool. He uses his toolness for for good things. So I had to include it because it was just like one: it's a guy headbanging to hurricanes, and. Too. Oh, yeah. It was just so ridiculous. And there's like a Vice episode like segment on him. I have to go watch that. Yeah, just look up Lane Pittman, Hurricane Florida Man, and you'll find all sorts of goodies. It's ridiculous. He's ridiculous, but I also kind of love him. So it was like a good Florida oh, Man yeah. story. Like, he didn't do anything bad. He's just being ridiculous during Florida's hurricane. For sure. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's if it weren't, if he were taking himself it seriously. Then it would be yeah, no. annoying. But the fact that he is leaning into how ridiculous yeah. it is. He's absolutely ridiculous, but I, I thoroughly like was just cackling while watching all these clips of him headbanging and I mean he, he fully acknowledges how ridiculous it is, but he like he went he went viral for the first <laughs> one and was just like, Alright, well how can I use this? Yeah, no, I mean he's using it for good and I mean fuck. There's like a video of him dropping off supplies to people, like helping people out. Oh I do love a good Florida man story. So I thought that was like a, a happy Florida man story. That was great. Alright, you wanna see where we go next? Yeah. All right. Doo-doo, well, doo-doo, I am looking doo-doo, at the, the doo-doo, little looker doo-doo. thingy. I spy with my little eye a ah. Mississippi story on oh the horizon. We're in Mississippi. We are going to Cleveland, Mississippi. Not to be confused with Cleveland, Ohio. I'm sure there's like 80 Like, like uh, Springfield, there's just like one in every state. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's so. um, Yeah. Let's find out what we'll talk about. It yes. is a number three. We got ourselves a cultural story. Oh, okay. Oh, this might. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a lot about Mississippi. I can tell you I know uh, nothing about Mississippi other than there's a river. I yep. know how to spell it the, yeah, because of that's the song. pretty much it. All right. Yeah, that's the end of my knowledge. So Yay! Woo. Travel lightly. From Florida to Mississippi, you don't have a long. Haul. I will. I will do my best to 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 travel in a way that requires no energy exertion for me. Maybe I'll just take a, like a raft up the river. <laughs> that would there are sharks in there the river. Sharks in the air. That's not true. Sharknado is real. Sharknado is not real. I don't believe you. Thankfully for all of us, a storm that rains sharks. It sounds like the world's worst plot and yet there's five movies about it somehow it's becoming less and less absurd as time goes i mean if if you can have uh meat raining from the sky why can't you have uh sharks that happened i know the kentucky meat shower i hope i hope we can talk about that would be kind of fun that's a story i like Super gross. It's raining and me. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's so I guess that's a something me. for people to Google on their own time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look it up. It's gross. Yeah, don't do it after you eat your dinner. Don't eat the meat that falls from the sky. Don't eat meat of unknown yes. origin ever. You're not sure what that meat is. I feel like that's just a good life rule. I agree. I fully agree with you. Mystery meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, I guess I'll meet you there. <laughs> I'll see you there. (laughs) Happy traveling. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Wandering Chronicles podcast with your hosts, Ashley and Jamie. You can follow us on social media at Wandering Chronicles Pod on TikTok, Wandering Chronicles Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and WND Chronicle Pod on Twitter. Or you can email us at Wandering Chronicles Podcast at gmail.com. New episodes drop once a week. If you're liking what you're listening to, please consider leaving us a five star review on Apple. 
If you don't like what you're listening to, that's fine. Please tell everyone you know about our podcast. Your bank teller, that person at work that you're pretty sure steals your lunch out of the fridge every day, but you can't prove it so you don't say anything. The hot dad that walks his dog by your house every day. Your cashier at the grocery store. Your children's friends' parents. I bet they listen to podcasts. Hey, thanks. Bye! alone. I was all by myself. No one was looking. (laughs) I was thinking of you. Oh yeah, did I mention I was all by myself?